we'll try to cover uh, the overall uh, information regarding the Azure DevOps uh, Octopus deploy system. Also, uh, I will try to tell uh, some uh, and make some comparison between like other uh, the CI CD systems and also uh, at the end of the presentation I will try to share some uh, insights from my previous projects when I worked with Octopus deployment but previous versions but for enterprise projects. So I guess uh, we can start so um, yeah so first of all a few words about the Azure DevOps itself. Uh, so uh, Azure DevOps basically this is the continuous integration also with uh, uh, continuous deployment uh, uh, possibilities resource which uh, is used like uh, uh, among like many projects so it's a new system it's uh, um, uh, it combines a few uh, tools uh, uh, to um, lead the projects and to manage the uh, projects tasks uh, uh, scopes uh, creating build pipelines, deployment pipelines, also uh, creating some test, uh, uh, testing management, uh, testing resources. So basically it includes a testing management system. But in our presentation, we're going to talk uh, about the Azure pipelines, Azure repositories and Azure artifacts. So um, Azure pipelines are basically uh, split into types of pipelines. Um, so the first one is build pipelines and the second one is deployment pipelines. Build pipelines are used to build projects uh, and the, uh, those pipelines can be uh, created using the UI, using the YAML uh, uh, files, so which contain the code of uh, all the steps included in the uh, pipelines itself. So uh, for the deployment pipelines, uh, it's a bit different because uh, deployment pipelines use uh, um, not built agents, but deployment agents. So in this case, Azure splits it um, into, let's say, types of agents used. So in this case, you can use on-premise, cloud agents, no matter what. So it, it depends on the project where you work on. For Azure repositories, uh, I think most of you worked with Git repositories. So basically a repository on Azure, uh, this is a Git-based repository and works in the same way. Azure also provides some UI, like for example, uh, GitHub or GitLab or, or Bitbucket. So for, for example, for pull requests, uh, for uh, making changes uh, um, on web, uh, like managing the repositories, security stuff, and so on. So managing branches, like everything what you can manage uh, from every other system or from the uh, local machine you work on with some Git uh, uh, tool. Yeah, so, and the Azure artifacts. So basically Azure uh, artifact, this is a storage uh, for artifacts which are produced by uh, build pipelines. Uh, also, they can be produced by deployment pipelines, but in most cases, deployment uh, pipelines uh, take the uh, build pipelines artifacts. Also, in this storage, uh, we can store, like, for example, different kind of packages like Nugget. So, in this case, um, or for example, third-party libraries, which can be stored uh, and placed there externally, not from the build pipelines. So uh, this is uh, uh, this is qu uh, quite a bit more regarding the repository. So um, working with Azure repos, uh, you don't need to, for example, use um, tools like Crucible for uh, pull requests management. So you can use like internal Azure repo, uh, repos work well uh, works well. Um, with uh, containing like a lot of repositories, uh, combining different kind of project uh, teams to work in uh, um, in connection with the, like everyone else. So uh, also um, Azure repos uh, can be used uh, from the Visual Studio itself, and then you can manage your code from the Visual Studio itself. Who works from it? Um, yeah. Okay, so uh, telling more about Azure pipelines. Um, so uh, they can, uh, you can work with those uh, on uh, like all platforms, no matter what's like Windows it's, uh, or Linux or Mac OS. 
uh, you can build uh, and deploy any kind of projects uh, no matter what uh, language is used to develop those so basically it suits uh, for all the needs also uh, the steps under the Azure pipelines uh, are, let's say in a big variety of different uh, um, actions to be done I mean uh, for example for, for the build pipelines you can find uh, um, extensions for building uh, any kind of projects for uh, for example for making um, I know packages for uh, maintaining the change log files I know pushing some changes uh, uh, into somewhere notifications extensions and so on so basically the extension marketplace is quite huge for that so in this case uh, you create you can create uh, um, any complicated uh, with let's say um, any kind of like pipelines yeah so yeah let's talk about the octopus deploy system so uh, if we say uh, like what can be used for the deployment purposes what tools can be used we um, I could tell that like Azure DevOps can be used, uh, Jenkins can be used, Team City can be used, and any build system can uh, be used for the deployment purposes. Uh, but so Octopus is uh, um, explicitly uh, created for the uh, maintaining the continuous deployment process because it contains a lot of features, which we'll talk a bit later, uh, which will help to manage any kind of deployment of any complexity. Uh, mostly Octopus is used for the enterprise project projects where we have like a lot of tenants, uh, we have a lot of projects, we have a lot of environments um, and so on. So in this case, it provides a very, um, I would say user-friendly interface to manage everything. So um, and it, uh, it works a bit differently uh, for, for with uh, for example uh, deployment uh, process uh, how it's distributed between the tenants and projects so we'll talk a bit uh, about it a bit later but uh, in most cases uh, this is a very good uh, expensive and uh, very uh, configurable tool so uh, I will also try to cover some um, compare uh, key features uh, with other uh, continuous deployment systems, also uh, which were used uh, in the past. I mean. uh, for the current presentation, the uh, the key is uh, that we will talk not with application deployment. I mean, web projects or I you know SQL databases. We'll uh, talk at the first for the infrastructure deployment. So using the uh, um, cloud uh, cloud resources creation so in this case um, in our case um, on the project we use Azure cloud to create all kind of resources uh, creating the whole infrastructure for the projects to suit their needs so we create different kind of environments uh, using the terraform so in this case uh, we use the Azure DevOps for the building uh, Terraform code and then publishing it to Octopus and then using Octopus to deploy the um, environments uh, so we um, basically we create everything from the code so uh, few words about Terraform so uh, it provides possibility to create any kind of resources uh, on the cloud um, it's fully uh, reading from the code without any uh, web UI configuration so in this case it's fully reproducible uh, infrastructure can be fully uh, reproducible uh, also it can be stored like in git for making the uh, team collaboration possible and uh, uh, also terraform has this uh, terraform cloud which provides uh, web UI possibility to maintain the code altogether uh, also uh, it it, uh, it can be used in order to create modules from the Terraform resources. And uh, Terraform itself can work not only with Azure, it can work with um, AWS and other cloud providers. So uh, in our case, uh, we use Azure. So um, for the Octopus environments, uh, the 
the promotion of each environment is the same like in other systems. Uh, so uh, in our case, we're not going to get like any other uh, configuration rather than uh, the, let's say, not the default, but mostly used promotions of any um, environments. Um, some, uh, on some projects we have like models, so on some less, but uh, Octopus provides possibility to uh, deploy any kind of release, not only on uh, one or multiple environments, it also provides possibility to deploy the single release on multiple uh, tenants. So for example, when you have uh, like multiple projects and you have um, uh, on these projects, uh, same for example, um, infrastructure uh, structure so you can deploy this infrastructure on all of those without duplicating the uh, uh, releases so and then um, it creates well very I would say um, let's say um, debugging possibility for that because uh, in most cases when you duplicate releases you create you know other releases uh, using the same artifacts in this case it can create a mess when you have for example a lot of projects so uh, talking about the current uh, on the current project there are like I know plenty of those so it's not even uh, you know uh, 30 or 40 of those so it's much more and also the quantity of environments and uh, other resources under the octopus it's quite huge so in this case uh, octopus is being used uh, and configured in a very good way uh, in order to maintain and suit well uh, for enterprise project uh, deployment for different clients uh, including uh, very different projects so uh, this is the sample of deployment dashboard on octopus on the uh, project view. So in this case, um, you can see the release versions, environments, uh, like on other system. Uh, the only case that the complexity of the screen can be uh, increased uh, significantly uh, when you have like a lot of uh, environments, a lot of types of those, and also, uh, for example, dependent uh, pipelines and so on. So in this case, um, this is I would say a simple one. I cannot uh, show the project dashboards uh, because it's um, restricted to show. Uh, it contains a lot of client information, but I will try to cover that on uh, on next uh, slides. Yeah, so a uh, few, I would say, main benefits of using Octopus. So um, first of all, it's aimed to create a manageable space for any project in order to fulfill all needs of any automated deployment system. Yeah, it's true because the possibilities basically uh, fulfill all kinds of requests. So no matter what project is, no matter what I know project is written on, uh, no matter what technology used, uh, language and so on. So it works uh, well for uh, these projects. Uh, mostly uh, Octopus is .NET aimed uh, because uh, in most cases you will find all uh, uh, tools uh, uh, as a primary for .NET projects deployment but uh, it can be used for other projects as well. In this case uh, if you won't find the extensions uh, for uh, like steps uh, to include into pipelines uh, you can uh, uh, creates a lot of uh, scripting stuff like PowerShell scripts uh, in order to fulfill these requests. But in most cases, you will find that uh, for sure. Some only some I know very uh, unique ones uh, need to be written. Um, very good management and configuration and scripting of configuration and scripting. Sorry. Uh, so in this case, uh, the UI of Octopus itself uh, provides. Uh, I would say very uh, good uh, functional features in order to uh, edit like everything what you can find there. Also, uh, it aimed to use uh, scripting, uh, let's say as uh, first priority because uh, for example, even for the net projects, uh, scripting can be used to uh, set up the VMs, uh, uh, for example, I know install SQL server, set up everything and uh, make um, all the uh, configuration changes required for the project to be uh, uh, up and running. 
The ability to manage different stages and define a workflow is very useful for operations, troubleshooting, as well as deployment. You can see which version each environment uh, has for each project and promote, promote and or deploy versions. Yeah, so uh, this kind of uh, feature is uh, exists like in all other systems as well, but in Octopus, it just more user friendly. Uh, it has more user friendly interface and. Uh, um, it can show exact needed information and you don't need to, I know, deep into very huge logs. Um, it has a lot of uh, uh, different kind of use, for example, for logging, like uh, verbose level, which basically works very good from the uh, web. Um, deployment logs, uh, so you, you can view deployment logs and dip into the problems or long deployment steps. In most of the system viewing logs of each step is important for debugging and analyzing. Yeah, it's true. So in this case, Octopus will help a lot. And uh, uh, talking about uh, my experience with Octopus, uh, the uh, visibility of the uh, issues uh, inside the deployment process is quite, um, uh, is quite like let's say on the first line so you won't uh, uh, you won't need to I know dig a lot for that to find um, comparison of the old re releases and uh, comparing those so in this case octopus I think has the most uh, functionality for that because uh, you can com compare not only the old releases with the new ones and it stores like all uh, releases starting from the first one, uh, you can compare also uh, different project releases, which helps a lot sometimes uh, in order to find some differences, configuration changes, uh, deployment changes. So, um, changes uh, and change log is available without need to dig into it. Um, it's just displayed on the release page. Yeah, it's true, and the Octopus provides that uh, in a very uh, smart way, so uh, it gives it just seen like on the first page on the release of the release. Um, so talking about the integration uh, with other continuous integration tools or continuous deployment tools. Yeah, it's true. So basically Octopus can take artifacts from other systems which can be pushed directly to Octopus or uh, it can, uh, Octopus deployment pipelines can be triggered from the other continuous integration systems. Also, uh, there are different kind, uh, kind of possibilities to be managed by the uh, CLI. And so the uh, API works well for uh, conf uh, conf uh, configuring and managing Octopus from the command line. Uh, operations automation, such as disaster recovery in similar situations. Yeah, so uh, Octopus provides uh, uh, so-called run books. So in this case, uh, you can create different kind of scenarios when uh, some disaster recovery pipelines or steps should be executed in order to, for example, reload the application, redeploy application if something happens, or for example, I know, aim to some other SQL uh, a server by managing the uh, configuration files. So it depends on the project and uh, it has a variety of configurations under this part. So this is very cool feature. In this case, you can uh, cover the most, I would say, uh, cases which could happen. But it requires uh, quite significant work on this because uh, this uh, complicated disaster recovery uh, steps need to be uh, discussed, planned, and implemented into the Octopus and also tested. Multi-tenancy deployment. Uh, so that kind of uh, stuff I've talked uh, before. So it's possibility to deploy the release on uh, not only on one particular project uh, or, or on one particular uh, environment uh, stage. I mean, so it's also that you can deploy it directly to uh, multiple clients. That's very good stuff. And uh, you don't need to duplicate that. It also helps. Um, okay, so uh, f talking about the, uh, the last item, it's about the VMs. So, so Octopus provides workers and also deployment uh, agents, which can be uh, as cloud ones, as on-premise ones, and so on. So it provides a very good, I would say, uh, connection and different kind of uh, 
uh, agents called tentacles. So in this case, uh, you have um, at least two required uh, possible uh, types of those, like listening tentacles and uh, uh, pulling tentacles. So in, the, uh, in this case, you can create agents uh, in order to uh, deploy application on uh, using, uh, using uh, different logic. So talking about the Octopus project configuration, um, uh, here I would say uh, you won't find like any kind of uh, you know, very unique configurations, but Octopus itself has the, um, let's say, complicated uh, configuration possibilities like you know, tagging, categorizing, uh, have like different kind of options for the project setup, uh, different kind of cases coverage and so on. So in this case, um, it provides very uh, intensive uh, configuration possibilities. And that's very cool because uh, not every deployment system provides that. So in this case, you can construct projects uh, in order to fulfill requests of any and needs of any project. Also, there is possibility to create a project template. So for example, the uh, current project, uh, it was created uh, and cl cloned from the uh, Terraform uh, infrastructure project deployment template, which was created for the uh, unified, uh, for using the unified and the same configuration for the Terraform code deployment. So. That stuff very cool because in this case you don't need to set up a new project like on Azure DevOps um, directly for some specific uh, with a hard coded uh, configuration um, values. Also, uh, Octopus uh, has a very powerful variables uh, uh, usage and configuration. So in this case, um, most of the uh, namings. Uh, uh, of the project and inside uh, configurations can be taken from the variables itself. We'll talk a bit uh, uh, about it so later. So uh, for the tasks, so it provides just very good, I would say, logging, uh, possible to find any kind of information uh, from the uh, tasks uh, being executed executed, and also you can dig into the uh, logs uh, without any need to download anything or without any need to find, for example, something in a, a archive space. So basically this suits uh, as an archive, but this is the fast uh, searching uh, page where you can find like everything what you would need. Also, you can uh, find and compare the changes between these uh, executions. Uh, Octopus project and tenant variables. So that kind of stuff uh, is very cool and uh, I don't know whether like other system would have the same possibility to edit variables as Octopus, maybe you know, uh, but uh, for uh, talking about my experience, this is the most, I would say, um, extended version. So each of the variable you can create not only on a project level or on pipeline level or step level, you can also create that uh, above those. So you can create it on tenant uh, level, like global uh, variables. And the global variables are very, um, very used uh, because uh, in this case, they can be used in the project templates and then uh, those variables uh, can control like uh, what names uh, or what uh, settings uh, should be taken on uh, which project created uh, from the template. So in this case, you don't need to further manual manipulations and uh, do any kind of changes. Each variable has a lot of, uh, so first of all, variable type is uh, uh, multiple type. On the next screen, we'll uh, see what types of variables are. And also the value of this variable can be as single as multiple, and uh, it, it can be of a uh, different type. So in this case, the arrays are created. That's very cool, because in this case, uh, you can store, uh, even, I know, 
let's say PowerShell code inside, or you can uh, store some uh, some other. So we'll talk about it on the next slide. Um, for the uh, for the type of the uh, variable, uh, so it can be uh, uh, like any kind of like PowerShell, Bash, any and of course script C sharp or JSON, XML or plain text, so and other. So that's uh, can help on a lot of projects where you would need those. So in our case, on the current projects, uh, we use only plain text and basically on previous projects, we would also use plain text. Maybe we would use some, I you know, PowerShell type, but it depends. So, but uh, if, for example, you would use some other type of octopus variable, so it's possible in this system. Um, on Azure DevOps, uh, you won't find uh, such uh, variable types possibility to set so to be set. So uh, Octopus provider that's usable. Octopus variable set. So on this screen, uh, this is the Azure Environment Naming Convention, like a global variables which are used to among the projects, and they are set by default. They, uh, also for each variable or variable set, uh, the scope and the source can be set. The scope, this is, um, uh, this part is, is very good. So uh, talking about the Azure DevOps variable uh, libraries, uh, uh, they should be included in the pipelines itself. So in Octopus, you just set the scope, for example, projects where you would need uh, those variables to be used. Uh, that is the way uh, how you would uh, fill the required uh, variables, same variables uh, on different projects. Um, also, uh, it's library variable sets can be, uh, uh, so you can filter by scope, you can filter by variable, and also there is a powerful uh, editor of the of each variable. And so in this case, uh, you can um, you can see like everywhere it's been used and it's used, uh, and the only thing that uh, Octopus doesn't have as well as, for example, Azure DevOps, uh, this is the history of variable changes. Um, so, for example, if you set a variable as secret, so the value will be hidden, uh, so you you won't have possibility to revert this change and see what's been hidden. So for the secret variables, it's logical, but for other variables, when you have multiple values inside, and for example, on a previous project where I worked on, uh, we had uh, variables set, and uh, we stored those uh, uh, in uh, in Git uh, and pushed those variables using the CLI, so rem uh, through the API. Because um, if, for example, something from that list uh, sh would be lost, uh, it would be a very significant. Uh, uh, issue for the project. So in this case, we try to uh, uh, create that uh, hist uh, manageable history and history itself of variables. Um, few more things to mention, just to mention. So a variable can contain multiple values of different types, constructing an array. Yeah, so that's true. I've talked about it. Uh, Scope can be as a single as multiple for any variable. After complete, this is a very, very uh, cool stuff and Octopus had that. Azure DevOps or Jenkins doesn't. No version of variables, uh, yeah, so it's minus. And comparing to Azure DevOps, Octopus has even more uh, better variable managed. Yeah, so that's that's completely true. Um, Octopus deploy has channels itself. So this is, um, this is stuff when uh, you have, for example, 10 steps under the pipeline and you want, um, you know, six steps to be executed uh, uh, on the, let's say, default channel, like the the, 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 the the first channel and the other ones on the second. And you set the channel when you create a release. So it's a categorizing and uh, it's, it's very useful because you can create a full set of steps and then just split all the steps where they should be executed and where not also. Uh, you don't need to create multiple pipelines uh, duplicating uh, the steps itself, no matter uh, you 
you would do that like through UI or you would do that through the code or YAML files, for example, as Azure DevOps. Um, so in this case, uh, this is a very useful feature. Octopus deployment process. So this is the uh, set of steps which are going to be executed by the uh, uh, pipeline when you create a release. Also, you can find the, uh, for example, on this page, default and destroyed channels. So uh, for the terraforming, uh, we have a default which basically suits for the deployment purpose and destroy for the de destroying the whole created infrastructure. So. Uh, this, uh, the uh, structure of each step is quite similar to other uh, uh, tools like, for example, ISO DevOps or Jenkins or Team City. Uh, it has a variety of uh, options inside. It has a possibility to include steps from the extensions marketplace, as I've told you before. So in this case, we won't uh, dig into. Uh, Octopus multi-tenancy, uh, so uh, few words more. So, um, in most cases, um, you would need to duplicate uh, pipelines and put it like under each, uh, let's say, client uh, or set of clients or project or set of projects. In Octopus, you don't need to do that. In this case, you just define the scope where the uh, pipeline should be executed and which steps should be executed. That's very cool stuff. And for enterprise projects, it works well. Um, so for, for the uh, enterprise projects, which I worked uh, uh, before, that was based on a sidecore deployment, uh, deployment and the, uh, uh, this part was a very, I uh, would say, uh, cool feature because the complexity of the whole deployment process was uh, pretty high and who worked with sidecore would understand that the uh, steps uh, uh, are very uh, complicated and managing the changes inside the steps should be uh, uh, not just configuring like multiple of those but Octopus provide that you you would just change the uh, one and then it, it would be applied in further releases for all projects, tenants where it uh, could be deployed. Uh, octopus tagging. So uh, I won't dig into like each of these steps, but I would say that octopus tagging uh, provides a very good possibility in uh, tagging any kind of resource underneath. Uh, in this case, you can find everything, you can uh, filter everything, you can categorize everything, no matter what uh, uh, complexity of that would be required. You can do it. It's this is a very cool feature um, for managing. Uh, for, for the man management of the uh, projects itself. For the sub steps, yeah, so uh, as I've told you, you can find a lot of uh, uh, types uh, from the inside of Octopus and also the community steps where you could find a lot of uh, other external extensions uh, which are developed uh, by other people. Um, yeah, so that was like, for, for the Octopus overview uh, in comparison with other systems and just uh, a few words about the process, uh, deployment process, which is used on the current project for the terraforming. So in this case, we deploy infrastructure. It's not a, an application deployment. We deploy virtual machines, networking, uh, I know load balances, uh, application gateways, we deploy roads, uh, we peer networks uh, and other stuff. So in this case, on the Terraform part, uh, we have the, uh, um, on the left side, you can see it. Uh, so we have a code with configuration files, infrastructure parts like Terraform files, and the extensions which uh, exist with some scripts uh, to, for example, manage the logical disks creation from the mounted devices. So when, for example, some disks are uh, attached, we need to create storage spaces uh, or logical disks. Uh, so in this case, PowerShell scripts uh, uh, help us with that. Uh, and talking about the module, so uh, Terraform has the resources ca which can be used. Then uh, we use modules. We create, uh, uh, so for example, when you need uh, multiple networks or network security groups to be created, you just create a module code and then you just use that module which can create uh, multiple resources of it of the same type. So in this case, uh, it eases the way to, and reduces the amount of code uh, which requires to be written for the infrastructure. 
Uh, then basically we use Azure DevOps. Um, we store everything in Azure DevOps repository. Then we put it like in the build pipeline. We build and test the code and we put it in the artifacts. Then uh, we push it to the Octopus deploy system where the automatic releases are created under the project level. Uh, then uh, we can basically deploy that release uh, by defining the uh, deploy channel or destroy channel. Uh, for, the, for, for the steps under the infrastructure deployment, we have Terraform plan and Terraform apply. Apply can be uh, whether apply or destroy. So when you, uh, you deploy, you apply changes, uh, for example, when you destroy, you just destroy the uh, all changes which were deployed previously. Uh, and also, uh, yeah, at the end, we'll have like uh, gateways, virtual machines, networking, load balances, roads, disks, I know each of the VM setup, like everything, what you would do manually, everything is done using the Terraform code. Um, yeah, so I think this is it uh, for the current presentation. Uh, I know that I took maybe even more time, uh, which was uh, for, for this presentation, but if you would have some questions, or if you have questions, please ask. Yeah, I have a question. I sure. want to ask about uh, updating of the Octopus. For example, currently one of our customers have Octopus version, but it is from 2014, uh, so uh, it is six years old. And uh, uh, so uh, I propose to update it to the latest version because it is <coughs> outdated and uh, not useful. Uh, did you have some uh, had some experience of upgrading Octopus uh, from uh, version to another version and how it works and uh, what uh, impact or risk could be by doing this? Okay, so uh, the the only situation when uh, it happened to me, uh, so basically I worked with six years old Octopus and yeah, it was. Uh, 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 it was on the project where the site code was. So in this case, uh, it was updated to the newest version, which was released, I think, uh, two years ago, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, the only thing that we didn't up, uh, update it automatically, so we moved everything from the old Octopus to the new one because of the features being changed. And then uh, Octopus itself and the developers uh, couldn't provide uh, uh, the, sh the enough sureness that everything will work because if you have like complicated uh, projects it's it's always a matter of risk to lose something so uh, in this case uh, uh, we did it manually we didn't do it automatically uh, so you did like uh, copy all of the variables from uh, old version to new version you mean uh, not only variables, like everything. Yeah, so you export like everything and then you put it on the latest version by parts. Because then you can check like everything, whether it's been imported correctly or not. So in this case, it depends on the version. It depends on the project. It depends on the project complexity. It depends like uh, even on... Uh, I know some kind of a proxy setup because sometimes you have, for example, deployment targets which uh, use proxy. So in this case, um, the old versions of Octopus, as I remember, they uh, uh, they didn't have this uh, proxy possibility to be used for the deployment tax, uh, targets uh, uh, registrations. So in this case, there were some manual uh, things which we did. So it depends. Thank you.